Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. It's uh, just before Christmas, uh, 2020. So first of all, I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, obviously within the constraints of what you're able to do. I wanted to just say thank you very much indeed to everybody who subscribed to my Mark's Garage channel on YouTube. So I've just hit a thousand subscribers. which is a milestone for me. I'm very, very pleased to say that, you know, we've achieved that. Everybody that has subscribed has contributed towards that. So thank you very much indeed to everybody that's subscribed. And, you know, if you haven't, it doesn't matter, as long as you're enjoying the videos. I'm just trying to preach the, you know, Ford flatheads and hot rods and tinkering in the garage, that sort of thing. So thanks very much. For this video, I'm going to do a little intro, so uh, I'll just tell you what you can look forward to. Uh, I've, excuse me, but I, ha I have had to write a couple of things now. In part one, uh, we carry on the, on the assembly of this engine with Jack helping me, my son helping me. Jack doesn't have any mechanical knowledge, and he, he, I said, do you want to help me put this engine together? And he says, yeah, all right. So, OK. So, you know, he has been helping me. So thanks for that, Jack. So that's part one. Uh, we, we deal with the, um, the lifters, the cam and the valves. In part two, I take one of the front hubs on the 32 and fit it all up with the bearings and the grease. And, you know, get all the bearings clean, grease everything up and fit the front hub as a trial fit before fitting the brakes. In part three, I, having fitted, you know, the cam and the lifters and the valves, I then fit the crank. And there's a little bit there which might be useful, which shows you how to hold the crank in a certain way, so you get it aligned with the cam very often on the first attempt. Um, in part four, on the 32, when I fitted the hub it threw up a problem which I was able to resolve and I had to make modifications to the spindles so I've never ever heard anybody mention that before you know you see the kit for putting the hydraulic brakes on but I've never seen anybody mention having to do the modification that I did so that might be interesting for you um, in, <laughs> in the last part, which is just a little bit tacked on the end, uh, part five, I go back and revisit the valves and you'll see why I wanted to do that. So I was a, a little bit unhappy about some of the way that the horseshoe clips seated and I, I knew I'd got one of the springs a different way around than I wanted, so I wanted to address that, but I found something else, so you know, you might find that interesting because we all do it. And that's it. That's the end of my little notes there. So thanks very much. I hope you enjoy the video. And thank you again for everybody that subscribed. Cheers then. Let's get cracking. OK, we're going to put the cam in then. Oh, should I put the... Oh, I'll put the lifters in first. Yeah, I'll put the lifters in first. The lifters are in this bag. So we got red light flashage. Mm -hmm. This is a job for you, actually, Jack. I'm saving this one up for you. Why is it old? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Look, Jack, it's like Christmas decorations. Shine. Yeah. There's the lifters. Now the reason they're on a boot lace is because they're in order. So this is cylinder number one. This is the front of the engine. And there's eight, eight holes down that side and there's eight holes down that side. And these go in order. This one 
goes in the front one. So what you're going to do is put them all in. Well, I'll, I'll start the ball rolling. Now I don't know if it's easier to put them up from underneath or in from above. I suspect it might be easier to put them in from beneath. I suppose we don't really need the engine on its end, but just put a bit of slick on and shove it in the in the lifter hole there. That's it. And then work your way down the boot lace. A bit of oil and shove it shove it. So is it one, two, three? Yeah. 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 No, hang on. No, that's wrong. <laughs> hang on. I've got my left and right mixed up. Where's the... I'll pop that out. You grab that when I pop it out. Hang on. There you are. Yeah. And put it in this side front. So everything you just said, but on this side. Yeah. Okay. Then work your way down the boot. Nice little bit of oil. Because that's cylinder number... Hang on. Number one, right hand side. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's number one. So that's that's the... It's not very good light, is it? I'll leave the camera here a sec. You carry on and I'll get a light. Engine assemblies are a nice, kind of quiet job, you know what I mean? We could do it, yeah. Now, I think it's probably best to do it like that because they won't fall out, you see. If you do it the other way, they could fall right through. Oh, I see. <laughs> and floppy finger, floppy finger gloves. Yep. Well, I keep doing. I keep getting all my cylinders mixed up. You know, mm. I end up having to remove stuff and <laughs> rework it all. Let's see. There should be another eight here. Yeah, and that they start top, top on the other side. Yeah, don't get the gloves tangled up. They're hopeless, aren't they? Yeah, bits of bits of blue rubber glove stuck yeah. in the engine. It's not going to be good. These lifters are all pretty good, to be honest. Much better than the ones in the crusty flatty. That one's slightly different pattern. Look, see, it's kind of different shape. Mm. It goes in okay, but it's like the the holes are different. Now that one of them last two might feel a little bit tight. On this one. <laughs> like that one. Hang on, you must be one out, Jack. You oh, one yeah, out, yeah. Yeah. Out. yeah. Go around the other side and pop it out. I just counted up then. They work quite well, that bootlace trick. I was trying to think of a way of keeping them all in order, like using an egg box or something like yeah, that, but yeah. it worked really well. Let's see. What we do now, I'll do this, because uh, not because it's hard, but just put a bit of oil on there. Let's see. And there. And there. Just going to lower the can in. Do it vertical because I find it a little bit easier. See where you get your fingers caught. Okay. That's it. What, you can, what happens, Jack? The, these bits go around, and when that bit goes around, it pushes them things up and down because they're cam followers. Okay. okay, valves then. This is cylinder number one, and all the valves are in here. Ah, now what we have to do, we have to put the uh, springs on and stuff. Okay, and I'll show you a trick. So here's the valves, look, Jack. See, that's number eight? Yes. 
with a dot. And that's number eight without a dot. Swing the camera around over here, Jay. There's number seven with a dot. Five with a dot. Two with a dot. Okay. Now, I can't remember if I put the dots on the exhaust or the inlets. But the inlets might be magnetic and the exhausts won't be magnetic. So I'm going to go and get a magnet and test. Right. That's magnetic. Right. See? Magnetic. Look. Not magnetic. Magnetic. So no dot is inlet, proven by that one and that one. But what this means is that I've got an exhaust valve on the inlet on number two. Okay. That's a magnet out of a computer drive. Okay, here's the trick. You take number one. Oh, you take the O-ring off, put it in the thing, you collapse the lifter over there like that, you put the spring on, put the keeper on, bring it back like that, and then you pull these back, now they should go, yeah, there you go, there. So that is number one. These are the inlets, and that's number one inlet, so that goes in there like that. And we, the join goes upwards in my head, anyway. So that goes in there. So I'll do number, so take the O ring off. Now, I've got different springs here. There's four or what? Oh, now, hang on, let's have a think. That goes like that, I think. So there you, you collapse it. Put that on as far as you can. Put that on there. Bring it back and pull these back. And that's the inlet. No, no that's the exhaust. So you get the join, and these are the exhaust, and put it like that. And that goes in there. Okay, so do you want to do some of them? <laughs> what have we got with this whole spring thing? So, so number two would go... Yeah, so what you're looking for, you're looking for two, because this is an inlet, the next one's an inlet, so you're two without a dot. Tell you what then, tell you what we can do. You do this side and I'll do that side. How does that sound? Oops. Oh shit. <laughs> oh god. Oh, oh bloody hell. Oh, I've broke it. Oh shit. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I got my foot caught around the light and I've I've actually broke the tripod. That's a pain, isn't it? I really have broke it. That snapped off. So I'm going to have to put a little clamp on that to hold it. Sorry about that. <laughs> chances, of, chances of us getting all these in right is going to be zero. <laughs> right, I'll work from this side then. You're going to be walking across the camera. No dot inlet. 
kind of saying things out loud because I'm, you know, <laughs> reminding myself more than anything. Inlet number six. Six with a dot. Join up. There we go. What you what you probably don't realise is the hours of work it's taken to get all these valves and things into this condition where they can be fitted. This is a tough one. Okay. Get one side in. Yeah, if you get one side in, it's it's easier. Okay, seven exhaust. Yep. Join up. Ah, now that hasn't gone down, you see, because the cam's up. Okay, inlet, that's it, inlet. Oh, you've done all yours. Bloody hell. Okay, that's eight. Oh, hang on. I've done eight inlet. I've gone out of order. What am I like? Are you vaping? <laughs> Just done it wrong. That's that's the spring I wanted to use on the exhaust. Okay. Now unfortunately they don't come apart as easy as that. I'll show you how to get them apart. There is a handy valve spring compressor. And um what you do, you just select a coil near the end like that, thread that on, and bring this down, hopefully. It'll move it enough to get that out. There you go. It's nice and easy. Because I wanted to use the closely coiled springs on the inlets. It doesn't make any difference. I just wanted to keep matched parts on one side. That's seven inlet. You do eight exhaust, Jack, and I'll go and get the tool that we need to put the to pull the valves down. Oh, there ain't there going to be no bits of fluff in my engine. <laughs> yeah, it's probably bad practice using woolly gloves. Join up and down, yeah? Yep. You have to do that, otherwise this tool won't go in. Okay, what I'll do, Jack, I'll get you to use the camera to point into there while I kind of just... It's all well known to any flathead people, but... Okay, so... What I'm doing, I'm going in with the tool and I'm going between the coils onto the end of the valve guide, like that. And I'll pull it down. Pull it down. Take the horseshoe clip and put it in there like that. Like that. Make sure it's kind of settled in. Then, because oh. <laughs> it's tight, it's stayed down. But what I do then, I'll put it in there. Push it up. Goes in there. That's it, tap it in. Get a, get a spring clip. Lift that, pulls it down. You ain't gonna have the angle, are you, Jack? Lift that, pull it down, put the put the clip in. That's not in. I'm just going to tap that because it didn't feel like it was in. That's all right. I'm not 100% happy with it, but I think it's all right. It's not going to fall out. Right, do you want to do some of them? <laughs> yeah.
this is where you remember that it's hard to get to the last one. So I should have done the last one before I did the one next to it. Although that's going in okay, I think. There we are, there's eight done then. Blimey, okay. Okay, there no probs. Thanks, Jack. Sorry. Mr. Cameraman. Uh, same tomorrow. Yeah, if you like. Cool. See you then. Hello, here on the lathe I have the wide five drum that needed skimming. It's not in the best of condition but it's the only one I've got. Well, the only last one that I've got of a pair. Um, I just wanted to show you the setup. This is the setup. Now, I haven't gone mad with this. I didn't want to skim too much off because I wanted to, you know, allow this drum to last as long as possible. I didn't want to shorten its life by skimming it too much. But I've just took some off. And you can still see the bottoms of some um, rust craters. But I think in use, this will kind of clean up okay. Uh, it'll certainly bed the shoes in okay, but here's the setup. It's just a, a big center in the in the spindle. This is loose, so it tends to rattle. Um, but but it just relies on a friction drive. The center bottoms in the the bearing. That's just rattling around there like that. Look. So that's how I had it plenty of pressure on there and it, it just drives on a friction drive on there so there's a boring tool again not very rigid but it seemed to do okay then I just pull the feed there oh it's actually feeding backwards at the moment because I fed it out but hang on Pull the lever, pull the feed lever, it starts to feed and I just let it run in and auto turn off at the end and then on the last run I just run it backwards out like a spring pass. I'm not going to actually do the cutting now because I wanted to concentrate on what I was doing and I didn't want to complicate it by trying to film. But anyway, that's the setup. It's probably far from the ideal setup, but that's the setup that I used. That's just a wheel bearing in there, resting on the centre. Okay, right, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Shame about that, isn't it? Oh well, never mind. Can't have everything. Hello. It's um, blowing up a bit of a storm here today. Right, I had a little bit of a session earlier. There's my back axle sitting in place with the wheel on, look, a wide five. Just, you know, just put on there. Uh, those rear drums aren't yet ready to go on properly because I need to clean all the bearings. Um, the front drums, there's one on the floor. I've put that there because this is the one for this side. Because these shoes have been arced to suit that drum. What I have here are 
wheel bearings that have been cleaned um, they're old made in England and a seal that's reusable hopefully so those shoes can now be fitted I might do those this evening I might leave it till tomorrow but I thought I'd just come out to record what I've done earlier which is basically clean up all these parts and I'm over there are the same things this drum is actually um, this drum has all been cleaned inside that other drum hasn't so this one is actually closer to being ready to be fitted uh, and there and there are the pieces to go with it and there are the shoes as well there's not really a lot to these not very good light on this side of the car I found these um, wavy washers which might come in useful on this side on, on these front brakes because I think they're supposed to have a little wavy washer in there so I will look at assembling these brakes up I'll give the spindle a bit of a clean I'll assemble the hub up with the um, with some wheel bearing grease and then and the cleaned bearings I I much prefer to use good quality used bearings rather than brand new not that I well first of all there's nothing wrong with these the amount of miles I put on this car I would never wear these out so these are going back in but these are actually the bearings out of these hubs and of course you know what that means don't you when those when those bearings go on and then hubs go on other than the fact that I haven't got any wheels that will bolt on well I've got wheels but I haven't got tyres it would actually be a roller wouldn't it if you think about it okay right so that's the next job have a go at these um, the front hubs I'll catch you when there's more to show okay look I've got my front hubs on haven't put the brakes on yet I just wanted to try or fit them but all the bearings are cleaned, all the bearings are greased, the seals are in place and everything's nice. What I didn't realise but these are actually two different hubs. This one I don't know is a bit more, know, it seems a bit cruder than the other one. It's got a bigger space in the middle there you know where the grease goes. Uh, it also has a push-in cap which I didn't expect um, and to be honest it's hard to get the cap to clear the end of the spindle so I'm gonna have to kind of dress this cap make it a bit more domed but anyway I'm sure that's doable on this one everything's fine uh, all the bearings are good everything's greased up this one's got a screw-on cap again this one needs a little bit of fettling on this one the nut is is that shape and this nut is long enough to come to where the split pin hole is if you use wait a minute if you if you use this style of nut this style uh, which I think which is what I've got on this side it, it doesn't come anywhere near the split pin the cutter pin so um, I, I might have another one of those nuts I need to have a look it's a shame though I mean I would have liked I'll just keep my eyes open I might be able to find another drum but uh, everything's back together and um, this side actually there's no reason why that can't be called good uh, you know put the shoes on obviously okay so it's, it's rather stormy here tonight and it's quite late so I'm going to call it good at that I've done a little job I've cleaned all the bearings greased them up found good oil seals got everything assembled up I found those little spacers that the um, 
oil seals ride on the grease seals so that's good so yes it was only a little short session but it's looking good I think okay tell you what I won't leave you on that one because that one doesn't look as nice as this one this one looks a bit better doesn't it so it looks good <laughs> okay look at that I mean if that was down on the ground now that would be a roller wouldn't it that'd be a roller Okay, right, thank you very much for joining me in the garage. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Right, I'm with Jack Jones again then. It's um, not a very easy job, this, to be honest. It's handy having the light shining in there. You know, it, was, it really was a big help to have the jack holding the cam. It wasn't the camera so much, but the light. up on the cam so I'm going to turn the cam oh because it's stiff now isn't it turn the cam oh, let's put the end one in because it's tighter on the end one isn't it I wanted to get it all assembled up because some of the parts were beginning to go a bit rusty you know just from been hanging around. Now I'm not 100% happy about some of them, so what I, what I might do off camera is go through and um, either make sure they tap home. I mean that one I just did went in really nice. One or two of them are bent, a bit bent look from you know previous. I mean, that one there doesn't look like it's quite home, does it? Am I looking in the right place? That one there doesn't look like it's quite home. Down there. So if that won't go fully home, I'll pull it out and stick another one in. And I'll do that for all of them. So there you go, there's all the valves in. Not exactly a walk in the park. You know, it takes a bit of jiggery-pokery and you need the right tools. A little bit of a little bit of knowledge, you know, you need to know quite how to do it. But hopefully by showing these videos, people will see, well, it ain't, you know, rocket science. You can do it. And I thought, you know, I'll get Jack to help. He might take an interest. I'm going to flip it over now and drop the cam, the crank back in. And hopefully get it aligned with the, with the cam. That's why I wanted to try it first. When it goes in, I want to know that it turned freely and I couldn't tell if it turned freely if the cam was in place. That was my thinking. Okay, let's put that bearing cap back in that fell out. Give it a little wipe over. This piece of dirty rag. Is that the mark? Now there's the mark. This is um, a fibre gear, I think. So that, there's the mark. Did I just chip that? Not sure. So there's the mark. Right, now there's a trick to this, and I did this last time. This isn't a mega top dollar rebuild. This is a can we make it run job. I don't know where the camera's pointed. I'm using the light more than anything. Oh, there's the mark. Okay, there's the mark. There's the mark. Okay. 
So that's got to be down. So imagine that as being down. So this has got to be. So I'm, I'm over at the back end putting that bolt in over there. So the mark is there. So I'm going to rotate this like that. Okay. So the mark is down now. Can you see that? That zero. And this throw, so this throw, when I pick the crank up, this throw will be towards me at 45 degrees. So hopefully, I'm going to pick it up and drop it in like that. Camera's red. I hope it just stays on long enough to do this. Right, ready? <laughs> Let's see if that works. Ha <laughs> look at that, perfect. Zero mark, look, zero mark. See? There is a method to my madness. All being well, then I should be able to put these caps back on now. That's the front one. Like I say, somebody previous has put a notch there. Nice, fits, fits, you know, goes down nice, nice and snug. That's that one. Double check the alignment. Okay. There's the rear one. Plenty of oil on it. There we go. Six nuts. Six nuts. I'll go old school actually, rather than using the thing. I feel like a cheat. I bought this new ratchet the other day. I bought this new ratchet. You can move move it up and down like this. Because I on my old ratchet I used to use the the handle to uh, I used to use a ratchet extension to extend it. So I thought I'd try this. Now, I won't bore you with it, but I might have to do a bit of a switcheroo on the nuts to get the split pin holes lined up. Now, I did all that on the crusty flatty, but, and it can take a long time. And in the end, you can end up having to get nuts nuts off another engine. So I don't think I'm going to do that now because I've had quite a good session there. We've put the cam 
and the crank in uh, and timed them and put all the valves in. So I think I'm going to leave it at that for this session. And then I'll, I might come out later and do the nuts. Treat it as a separate job. Because you want to torque them and have the hole aligned. And if you torque it and the, and the, the hole is further round, it's going to be over torque. So you need to get the correct, you know, the nuts on the correct, in the correct place. So I'm quite pleased with that. It only takes a short time, doesn't it, to put them together. Getting all the parts ready to be put together takes a long time now. I'm not going too mad on this engine. I'm just treating it like a repair job. I've repaired the cylinders and the bores. The rest of it's just going back together, more or less, as it came apart. It turns and the cam's going around as well. Yeah, duh. <laughs> of course it is. Nice. That's all right now. Okay. Let's leave it at that then. So thanks to Jack for helping me earlier. It's nice to get him out here and do a bit. He says he's going to do a bit tomorrow, so I'll get him putting the pistons in, you know, help him putting the pistons in. Just helping holding the camera at an angle, is, you know, a decent angle is useful, isn't it? And, it, you know, he might find it interesting when it comes to getting this engine running. You never know. Okay. Thanks very much for joining me in the garage then. Another good nothing. Thanks a lot then. Bye. Hello. Um, I've been thinking about this job. When I was doing this job before, I said I needed these longer nuts to get in line with the cutter pin hole there, the split pin hole. Now, what I've realised is that as I'm using the wide five wheels, if you don't have this fully home, in other words, if you dome this cap out to clear the end of the thing, the hub cap actually doesn't go on. So what I'm thinking is that what I need to do is use these thinner nuts and um, I'm going to have to drill another cutter pin hole and my idea was to drill it downwards through the keyway and then I'll trim off the end of the threads. Okay, anyway, that's the idea. I'll bring you back when there's more to show. I'll have a little think about how I'm going to do it. Right, I've got to drill vertical that way and slightly th that way. I've put two bits of sheet metal between the washer and the bearing to just bring the thing out this, this way a little bit. vacuum and suck that off there. This is my other wrench, 12 inch diamond drop tool forged steel. Diamond cork horseshoe company Duluth Min. I don't know if I pronounced that right. That's the interesting thing as well. See, it says three quarter there. Look, it's got a three quarter. You can undo three quarter nuts with it. It's got a three quarter 
That's a hex, you know, by, by hex. Oops, sorry. There's my two little bits of metal, look. So it's just put a little bit of space in on it. Right then, to trim the end off, what I think I'm going to do is maybe use another nut. Put a nut, put a nut on like this. And you use the face of the nut to um, guide my angle grinder. I need to look at the relationship, don't I, between the new hole and the old hole. I think if I go to the edge of the old hole, it'll be a bit compromised on the new hole. So I think I'll just have to go partially into the old hole. That'd be about there. What I think I'm going to do, I'm going to take, take the hub and bearings off to save getting, risking getting the bearings dirty. And I can probably put two nuts on and lock them together. Looks a little bit skew if. that's okay I think it's okay yeah it looks all right to me if, you, if sometimes if you use a castellated nut it's like it's almost like putting a die nut down it you know it can clean up the threads just got my finger on the bearing to stop it falling on the floor lovely there's a split pin. That'll be okay. Nice actually. I think just spacing it out a little bit was a good idea. I'm pleased with that. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised to see that this um, this one takes a press on yeah that's better I was kind of dressing that to make it stick out it's got a bit of a That's nice and tight on there. Oops, <laughs> my life.
Oh no, I haven't aligned the thing, have I? But what happened yesterday, when I put the hubcap on, I'd be knocking it on here and it'd be coming off there. Then I'd knock it on here and it'd come off there. It was rocking on the cap and that's on now. That's nice. I like it. I might run it with the hubcaps. So there's another little um, tip that was a little bit bent in it. I've got a, I've got four of these and four odd ones. Hopefully, maybe between all the eight, I can find four nice ones. So there you go. Another step closer. I think that's looking good. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with the wheels yet, but you know, with regards to paint. So what I might as well do is make myself a little bit of room by moving the um, welding cart out of the way and all this stuff and um, fit the brakes now. Now that everything's going together okay. Then that, I can call that good, can't I? I can call it done. Right, nice one. I like it. I really do like it, actually. Yeah, I like that. Looks good. Dodgy old second-hand hubcaps. V8. There's the piece that was taken off. Took about eighth of an inch plus the thickness of the blade, so probably getting on for a quarter of an inch total that's a bit rounded that that um, spindle it almost looks like it's been shortened once already but it can't have been this with these were just standard 32 spindles okay I think using the nut as a guide was useful though okay I'll repeat that on the other side and put the brake shoes on and then that's another step forward thanks very much for joining me in the shop then I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Hello. Um, here's the flatty. I came out to check the um, the valve spring that I was concerned about, the wrong way around, and I wanted to check where the um, retainers were. And what I realised was I hadn't put that plug in. So I've had to pop all the valves out, push the lifters up, and um, just lift the cam up to the first, you know, past the sort of first set of bearings, and um, put that plug in there, that little plug there, special plug. So, <laughs> just shows, doesn't it, that you need to um, keep your wits about you and be careful and not get ahead of yourself when the valves have only just been put in and it hasn't run it's very easy to just get them out again because nothing's seized up or sticky you know and you can just whip them out quite quickly okay I'm gonna put it back together then it's a lot easier working on the cam and lifters though when the crank's not in place but it is in place now so but what I'm going to do is put it put the mark there's the mark there, the zero. You might not be able to see it. I haven't come out to do a filming session, but I just wanted to record the fact that I have remedied this situation. So when I lower the cam back in now, I will do it so that the teeth align. There's the naught, and there's the line aligned. Okay, I'm going to give this another little clean, just wipe it over before I put the cover on. Okay, right, just go put all them valves back in there. There's the motor with all the valves popped out. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. 
just doing a quick round up then of the valves I've checked that I've got two different types of valve springs but all the ones that are the coarsely wound ones which are on the exhaust valves are with the tightly wound end of it towards the guide I'm also checking along the recesses there that all the guide retainers are in the retaining counter bore. But what I've noticed on this engine is that this side the counter bores are quite um, shallow. So you have quite a bit of guide sticking out. You can see that you can see all of the bottom end of the guide. So on this side, I'm checking the valve springs again. Tightly wound end to the guide. Checking all that. But on this side, like for instance on that inlet there, look, can you see that the guide is quite deeply counterboard in? It's just the thickness of the metal surrounding it, isn't it, I suppose? So right, they're all okay. I've noticed a couple of little bits of dirt and stuff that are in there, so I'm going to get in and have a little clean out. And I've noticed a little bit of rust on some of the components, so I'm going to sort of spray, try and think of a way of spraying some oil onto them. So, that's okay. Then I've remedied that situation then. The cam is now back in, retimed, and all the valves are back in. It didn't take me very long. And, you know, things are looking okay. This engine will run. It says. <laughs> okay, right. Let's leave it at that then. I didn't even come out. I'm not even dressed in my old clothes, so... I'll, uh I'll catch you on the next one anyway. Bye then.